for the first time, a study has quantified the effect of rising heat waves in the Indian Ocean on the Indian monsoon over the Indian subcontinent. The study, which was led by the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology in Pune, found that marine heat waves have been increasing in both frequency and intensity in the Indian Ocean, and this is leading to changes in the Indian monsoon. The researchers found that monsoon over the central Indian subcontinent is going down steadily while rains over the southwestern and southern part of the subcontinent are going up. In this video, we'll look at what marine heat waves are, how they form and why, what impact they have and why they affect the monsoon. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. This study was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research on Tuesday and in it, the researchers analyzed temperature data over the Indian Ocean from 1982 to 2018. They studied how and when heat waves were formed and how long they persisted in the Indian Ocean and what their trend is like. Additionally, the researchers also analyzed rainfall and wind data to understand how marine heat waves in the Indian Ocean modulated the Indian monsoon. The monsoon studied was the summer monsoon, which is rains between the months of June and September in India. The researchers found that the western part of the Indian Ocean, which extends from the coast of Africa all the way to the Arabian Sea, experienced many more marine heat waves, much more than the Bay of Bengal side did. They went on to quantify the impact of these marine heat waves on the Indian monsoon by studying the temperature and wind data during and after these heat waves. Marine heat waves are patches of unusually warm waters in the oceans or seas. They tend to be typically three or more degrees warmer in Celsius than the surrounding water and they persist for a minimum of five days for them to be categorized as a heat wave. They are caused by a wide variety of reasons including buildup of ocean currents and varying ocean temperatures. In the study, the authors state that an increase in solar radiation, the heat from the sun, along with a drop in the winds over the oceans, caused an increase in heat waves here. When the winds are weak, heat is dissipated less. Evaporation occurs due to the sun's heat, but if the winds are weak, cooling is not very effective. So these kind of factors were what was contributing to the rise in heat waves over the Indian Ocean. In the western part of the ocean, the weak winds do not allow the flow of warm ocean currents from closer to the equator towards the north, towards the tropics. So this has allowed even more heat waves to form on this side of the Indian Ocean. The researchers also found that the El Nino phenomenon also intensified marine heat waves. El Nino is the climate pattern originating in the Pacific where warm ocean currents move from the west to east instead of how normally warm waters are being pushed here from the east to the west direction. El Nino also affects wind circulation of course and this in turn makes the Indian Ocean waters much warmer. At the core of all of these reasons is obviously anthropogenic or human-induced global heating. We haven't studied marine heat waves in much detail. The science is relatively new and we know much, much more about heat waves on land than we do with those occurring in water. The few studies that are available have a focus on the Atlantic and Pacific and typically more well their nations, but there have not been many studies quantifying marine heat waves in the Indian Ocean, which of course touch the coasts of many Asian countries and African countries and even Australia, but there especially is a lack of data about the impact on the Indian subcontinent from events that occur in the Indian Ocean. Between 1982 and 2018, the Western Equatorial Indian Ocean experienced 66 marine heat waves, while the Northern Bay of Bengal had 94 heat waves. On the Western side, they had actually increased fourfold during the duration studied, and on the Bay of Bengal side, they had increased two to threefold. All of them persisted for a few weeks to a few months. This is expected, but sometimes marine heat waves can persist for even longer. In 2013, a marine heat wave occurred off the coast of US in the Pacific Ocean in October and it started to expand. It continued to persist 
through 2013 and through 2014 and expanded for the next several months, more than 24 months. It persisted till the September of 2016 and then it is thought to have dissipated. This marine heat wave is now called the blob or the Pacific blob. The reasons it formed and persisted were similar lower than regular rates of heat loss from the ocean to air and low water circulation which made the upper layers of the waters static. It is thought that the blob is what caused the unusually warm summer in 2014 in Northwest America. In the study, the researchers analyzed the data of the Indian summer monsoon which occurs from June to September. It is responsible for nearly 80% of the country's rainfall. The study showed that the frequency and intensity of the marine heat waves that are going up steadily is in turn reducing rainfall over the central part of the country and the subcontinent. Further, the data also showed that the rains over the southern and southwestern parts of India are increasing. The researchers don't yet have enough data to tell how this change in rainfall would occur. For example, over the South India, will there be more intense bursts of rainfall or will there be an extended period of monsoon? We don't know, but there will be more rains over the South in the future and less over Central India. This has very obvious implications. A lot of water intensive crops are grown in central India, which is already plagued by such unimaginable farmer crises and this would get worse. There are going to be problems with agriculture, which is the source of income for about 58% of this country's population. There will be an effect on crops and also increased drought in some regions while there is increased flooding in other regions. And these are some of the more obvious effects. The researchers also found that these increased heat waves leads to an increase in the frequency and intensity of cyclones as well. And we already know that India is such a hotbed for cyclones, especially from the Bay of Bengal side. Even with cyclones, we notice that the trend keeps that the frequency and intensity of these events are also going up. Cyclones are naturally quite destructive to both infrastructure and life. Marine heat waves themselves also have an effect on a lot of things in the environment and the ocean. They affect marine life, killing life that is closer to the surface and having a cascading effect on the food chain in localized locations. When these heat waves are larger in size, they cause extensive environmental damage, including, very crucially, the bleaching of corals. They affect many ecosystems and, in turn, this also affects the fishing industry. Lastly, of course, they impact the weather on a massive scale. There is a crucial need to understand marine heat waves better, and right now they are not monitored that well in situ. In-situ monitoring uses buoys that provide accurate data while the largest amount of data today about marine heat waves comes from satellites naturally. The discrepancy in temperature readings between data from satellites and data sets from buoys could be up to 2 to 3 degrees with in-situ observations being more accurate. So much of our data is actually quite way off until we start to improve in-situ direct observations.